An engineer's most important job is to document the results in a report or presentation so that other people can act on their recommendations. Often, the most important part of any report or presentation are the figures in the report. They tell your story in a way that nothing else can. Octave has lots of plotting options, such as log plots, semi-log plots, pie charts, histograms, and so on. I'm going to go over some basic but useful features. A comprehensive list of options can be found in Octave's documentation. An example is the command subplot of 2, 3, 5. The command creates a grid of plots which has two rows and three columns. The subplot numbers are 1, 2, and 3 in the first row. The subplots in the second row are numbered 4, 5, and 6. So the fifth plot is here. This command will create this figure, if it isn't already created, and activate this subplot in the lower center of the grid. Any subsequent plot related commands, such as plot, title, x label, and so on, will be applied to this subplot. Now I'll demonstrate this example in Octave. For this exercise, I'm going to recreate the data we were working with in the previous video. We had a time vector t equals 0, colon, 0 0.01, colon, 10. We created a y vector, y equals 3 times exp of minus t over 2 dot times cosine of 4 times t. And a z vector, z equals 5 times t dot times exp of minus t. Now to create a figure to work with, type figure and press enter. We get a new blank figure window. Now type subplot of 2 comma 3 comma 5 and press enter. The figure window is now subdivided into a grid and the lower center section of the grid is activated. To plot in that section, just use the plot command as before. For example, plot of t comma z. Titles and labels also get applied to that section of the figure. So let's add a title, a subplot, and add a label to the x-axis with the x-label command. Make that time. Now this section of the figure window remains active until you change it. To move to a new point in the grid, use the subplot command again. So let's type subplot 2, 3, 3. Now we've added that section of the grid of our subplot. In this section, I'll show you how to further customize your plots. I've already shown how to change the color and style of the line and how to add symbols to the plots. You can also use the plot command to do things like changing the line width, the color of the symbols, setting axis ranges and labels, and so on. I have this figure with two functions. One is plotted as a solid black line, the other with the points as red circles. Suppose that I want to fill in the faces of the symbols on my data and make the line representing my function wider. Now to plot the data with a green face color on the symbol markers, type plot of t data comma y data comma r o to get the little red zeros, a quote marker face color end quote, a comma, another quote, and the code for green, a G. Then close the second quote. To plot the function but with a wider line, type plot of T comma Y comma K dash, we still want a black solid line, quote, line width, to change the line width, a comma, and the line width we want. I'll choose a 2. Notice that when I change the face color of the markers, the code was a string and was in single quotes. When I change the line width, the code was a number and required no quotes. These codes can get a bit tricky if you try to plot multiple sets of data within the same plot command. 
So if you want to do this, I'd recommend plotting each data set individually and using the hold command to overlay them. To illustrate this, I'll first clear the figure. Now I'll use the up arrow on my keyboard to plot the first data set. Then I'll type hold on and use the up arrow to plot the second data set. You can customize the axes on your plots with the axis command. The command is axis. The argument to the function is an array containing the minimum x value, the maximum x value, the minimum y value, and the maximum y value in that order. So to change my axes, I'll type axis and open parentheses and open square bracket to denote that I'm inputting an array and the range on my x and y axes. My minimum x will be minus 1, the maximum x will be 11, my minimum y will be minus 5, and I'll choose my maximum y to be 7. Now close the square brackets and close the parentheses. Let's look at our plot. One thing that is rather handy and easy to do is to put a grid on your plot. The command is just grid. Now I'll do some customization of the annotations on our plots. It can be handy to use italics, subscripts, superscripts, and Greek letters. Luckily, all that's pretty easy to do. Recall that we use the title command to put a title above our figures, the x label and y label commands to label the x and y axes, and the legend command to add a legend. All of these commands accepted strings as their input arguments. There are some codes we can put into these strings to customize them, though. To create a superscript, use the caret symbol. This is the same symbol you use for exponentiation. A subscript is denoted by the underscore character. For example, let's take our previous plot and add a title which shows the equation we used. The command would be a title, an open parenthesis, and a single quote to denote the start of a string. Let's let our title be y underscore 1 equals 3 e, a caret symbol, an open curly bracket, minus t over 2, close curly bracket, cosine of 4 t. Now terminate the string with a single quote and close the parentheses. Notice that the curly brackets grouped in the negative t over 2 term so that the superscript operation applied to the entire group. If I'd left off the curly brackets, only the first character after the caret would be superscripted. To add Greek symbols, use a backslash and then a code for the symbol you want. Usually, for Greek letters, the code is just the letter name spelled out phonetically. So let's put a vertical axis label on our plot by typing Y label, open parentheses, quote, this is a Greek letter, colon, space, backslash beta, to put the Greek letter beta there, another quote, and closing the parentheses. Italicizing is done with the code IT. Type a backslash IT, and the remainder of the string will be italicized. Let's add a label to the x-axis by typing x label parentheses, a quote, here is sum, backslash it, italicized text, quote, close parentheses. If you want to italicize just a portion of the text, use the curly bracket trick. Let's type x label, parentheses, quote, just one, open curly bracket, backslash IT word, close curly bracket, is italicized, in quote, close parentheses. Italicizing is especially nice in conjunction with Greek letters. It's typical in mathematical expressions to show these symbols in italics. Let's change our title. Type title, open parentheses, quote, the letter, 
curly bracket, backslash IT, backslash beta, close curly bracket to end my italicization, is italicized. Close quote, close parentheses. We can also use some of our previous knowledge to change the font. Let's use the up arrow to get to our previous title and add a font size code to increase the title font to 16 points. Finally, I'll talk about putting numerical values into our plot annotations. Octave treats text strings fundamentally differently from numbers. Since Octave's plot annotation functions, such as title, xlabel, ylabel, and so on, expect text strings as their arguments, there's a simple trick to sneaking numbers into your annotations. The octave function num, the number 2, and str converts numbers to text strings. The command takes a variable or a number as an argument and returns a corresponding string. You can use the resulting strings to display numbers that you calculate in your plots. There's a slight modification that you need to do when you use the annotation function this way. The argument needs to be defined as an array of concatenated strings. Just put square brackets around a comma delimited list of the strings that you want to display. First, I'll create a variable omega equals 2. Now I'll create a function that's based on omega. So new var equals cosine of omega times data. Now let's create a new figure window and plot the function by typing plot of t data comma new var. I'll add a title which includes the value of omega by typing title open parentheses open square bracket to denote the beginning of an array, quote, the frequency is, colon, in quote, that's the first string, comma, num to string, the argument for that, which is omega, comma, quote, rad per second. That's our final string. Close square brackets, close parentheses. This trick can be especially useful if you're doing parametric studies where you're creating figures that correspond to the value of some parameter you're varying. You can loop through the values, create your plots automatically, and label them appropriately as they're created. The last couple of videos introduced pretty much all of the plotting capabilities that I use the most. Octave does have more options, and the help documentation can show you how to use them.